Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on transpiration and translocation. So really we're going to be talking about the xylem and the phloem and then we're going to be talking about how water moves via the transpiration stream and that's going to be um, involving the xylem. So first of all, we're going to have a look at the phloem and this obviously is a great drawing uh, which I've just done. Now this is basically a diagram of what a phloem tube uh, kind of looks like. I'm going to move it over here just quickly so I can write. Now, the phloem, and it's spelled like this. Phloem. Basically, if you've watched the last video, you'll know that the phloem is involved in moving food, namely sugars, uh, around the plant, right, from one place to another. Okay, so it moves food, and I'm putting brackets here, sugars, around the plant to the cells where the food is needed. Okay, so a phloem vessel is made up, <coughs> excuse me, made up of uh, elongated, that just means long, right? Elongated cells which have small holes. Okay, and we call these pores in the cell walls which join them together okay if we have a look at the diagram and I'm just gonna swap color we have a look at the diagram that's what we see here and here right so these um, things here are basically the cell walls and there are pores in those cell walls right kind of like this blah 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 allowing things to move either this way or to move the other way, right? So it could move like that or it could move like that. And those things that are going to be moving, they are going to be sugars. So you could have a sugar. Let's pretend that sugars are red, even though they're not. And the sugar may be moving from this part to here, okay, from one cell to another. Or it could be moving this way from one cell to another and so on and so on, right? The part between each of these um, pores, so like this part, is actually a cell, right? And then this part is another cell. This part is another cell. You get the idea. Now, the point here is that translocation is the process by which that the food is moved, okay? So the movement of these, um, I'm going to say molecules, right because that is basically what they are yeah you've got molecules they could be sugars they could be other things but they are the food okay the movement of those molecules through the through the phloem is known as translocation okay this occurs in both directions okay that's very important because that is one of the distinguishing features between the phloem and the xylem Cool. So, speaking of xylem, we're going to move straight on to an even better drawing of a xylem vessel, right? Notice that I've gone in so much detail, it's even a different color. So we have xylem. Now, what do we say the role of the xylem was? If you think back to the last video, the role of xylem is to move water and minerals from the roots to the rest of the plant. Okay, so it moves water and dissolved minerals from not form from the roots to the rest of the plants okay cool now if we are to look at the xylem tube right over here you'll notice that it's very similar in terms of it's been split up into sections okay but the splitting of these sections is not quite the same so if we go back up here you'll see that the dotted lines around here are complete. It's like a full, um, it's a full cell wall in between those cells. Now I've drawn the dotted line a lot thinner here and haven't completed it because there is actually no cell wall in between these cells, right? These are cells, but they are dead. Okay. They are dead cells. Okay. They are not alive anymore. Um, they aren't carrying out any kind of living process because they are actually dead cells. Now, these uh, have holes, okay, um, joining them. So rather than 
pause in a cell wall, the cell wall is no longer there. Okay, so cell wall, I'm just gonna write it here, cell wall no longer present. Right, I'm gonna write that more neatly when I type. But there you go, there's no more cell wall in between those, and so there's basically just an empty tube in the middle of them, and that's where the water and the minerals are going to move. And let's say that water is blue, okay. So if we have water molecules, blah, 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 and in there you are gonna have dissolved minerals. Let's draw those in green, etc., etc. Now those things can only go in one direction, right? And that is from the roots to the rest of the plant. And so it might be from the roots up, and so these are gonna go like that. They are not going to go back down like this. Okay, they'll only go up and then more water and minerals will follow them, etc, etc. So that is actually a different mode of transport. So let me just get some of this typed up. So there are no cell walls between the cells. The cells of the xylem tube are dead and they're actually reinforced with a substance called lignin. Okay, so lignin is a protein, but basically it's a substance that just makes the tube stronger and means there's not gonna burst based on the amount of water that's inside it, right? Okay, so water and minerals move in only one direction. And this is a result of a process called the transpiration stream okay so before we saw translocation things move through the xylem vessels as a result of the transpiration stream okay and what is that well we are going to have a look at that right now okay so here we have probably my best diagram yet which is a plant right i'm not sure what kind of plant this is meant to be but it is one now what we have, and the reason we call this the transpiration stream, you'll remember that transpiration is basically the evaporation of water from a plant. Okay, basically water is evaporated and then lost from plant. Okay, so this mostly happens in the leaves, right? So water will actually leave the leaves, right? No pun intended. So water actually leaves. That's actually because the leaves are... Um, or the, they have a large surface area, sorry, right? And a large surface area increases the rate of diffusion, okay? You might be thinking, well, evaporation and diffusion, are they the same thing? Well, when water is evaporated, right, you get water vapor in your leaves, and if that water vapor can leave, okay, through the stomata, or otherwise, mainly through the stomata, then it will diffuse, okay? Don't get confused between osmosis and diffusion. Diffusion is when, let's say you have water vapor. Um, osmosis is diffusion of water, but it has to be across a partially permeable membrane, right? Here there's no partially permeable membrane, and so we still call it diffusion. Anyway, so water is lost, and if you think of it like sucking through a straw, that creates a difference in pressure, if you like, uh, from the leaves through the xylem down to the roots. So it's like almost as the water leaves, it's sucking more water up the xylem. Okay, so water inside moves up the xylem like this. Okay, and it supplies those leaves that have lost the water. Yeah. And what do you think that does to the roots? Well, the xylem is found uh, basically inside the roots. And that means that more water is sucked in through the roots. Okay. Okay. So, and the process continues. And as that water rises up to the top of the plant, then the water will be lost via transpiration. Yep, that creates a pressure difference. And now more water is sucked up through the plant. And that is what drives the one directional movement of water through the xylem. Okay, so, and minerals obviously. Right, so basically, up, let's say that this is where the leaves are, right? And then transpiration occurs, and this is lost, okay? This causes more to be sucked up from the bottom. Yep, and then it's lost, and etc., etc. But it's not going to go the other way because you're not going to be losing water via transpiration 
from the roots. So it's not gonna be going back downwards. It's only gonna be going away from the roots and that's why it is unidirectional. All right, and so I think I'm gonna stop there. In the next video, I'm gonna talk a bit more about transpiration and the things which affect the rate of transpiration, right? But I just wanted you to understand what the xylem and phloem were and that we have different modes of transport in the xylem and in the phloem, okay? So I hope that made sense. If you do have any questions though, feel free to put them in the comment box or send me a direct email by using the link below. But as usual, please like and subscribe because it really helps me. And it also notifies you of when any more videos will become available. But thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one.